everybody. This is about uh, presentations about delivering learning experience, um, meaningful experiences across the curriculum that allow every single child to be able to thrive. And this has been a passion of mine since beginning teaching, really, being um, 12 years ago, standing in front of my first ever class, um, teaching design technology. And design technology teachers across the, the globe, I'm sure, will um, resonate with the idea that everything within that subject has a cross-curricular link to everything and to allow those students to thrive who feel that they are not as creative or not as academic or anything like that that actually there's always something that can engage them and develop an experience for them so i wanted to share with you my thoughts on this idea of tangible my i think it's quite possibly my favorite word in the whole dictionary um and tangible for me is actually again going to an acronym where we actually start to break that down and think about how that looks within the curriculum and within the curriculum it links to it being thought-provoking accessible nourishing and nurturing generates ideas and excitement it's interconnected it's part of a bigger picture it's all about learning and exploring possibilities and i just want to go through those different letters with you um, and, and thinking about what's been spoken about already, it really is about having those relationships with the teachers and being able to go into any area of a school or any area of a curriculum or any area of, of learning in general, whether it's an extracurricular, whether it's the nurture groups that you are looking after, whether it's the gifted and talented, whether you know it's SEN, it doesn't matter. Every lesson should be able to have the ability to engage every single student. So, I'm going to take you through a few different things that I've done um, over the curriculum. A lot of this will look like it's all to do with um, digital technology because that's kind of the images that I've got. But I've worked in inner city schools in Nottingham. I've worked with schools across um, the UAE and um, and further away that, that don't have any technology at all. And it's not about having technology. It's about having that passion and that drive. And thinking back to something um, that was said earlier about not wanting to interrupt people, I had this horrible habit of, of interrupting people. I get so excited when I something clicks and I just feel like I have to tell people. And it really is about getting thought-provoking content into the curriculum, creating a sense of urgency and importance whether it's you know year three having a project about Mars and getting them to stop outside your room and put their helmets on and start to think about the fact that they are astronauts, or whether it's that you're doing some creative writing with your year 10s and you're explaining to them that there's been a pandemic um, and prior to COVID, that was the sort of things that we would do. And gosh, just imagine if that had happened and what would you be feeling right now? And it's about revisiting things with big questions, so starting projects. If you're a classroom teacher thinking about what that big classroom, what that big question is, and then revisiting it and not forgetting it. I think earlier in my teaching career, I'd begin with this question and slowly you would realize that you hadn't mentioned this question that you so vividly described to your students. And so then do they lose that sense of what they're meant to be thinking about and what they're going to remember? And we all have that teacher who we remembered, who sparked that innovation and discussion and that understanding of what and how and when they can do something. And then we move on to whether it's accessible and accessibility covers a whole host of different students needs, whether they're EAL um, and whether they can actually understand the curriculum that you're looking at and whether we need to add in different scaffolds to support them. I have a genuine belief that we should always teach from the top. I've pretty much for, I'd say 10 out of the 12 years, always taught mixed ability groups. Um, and those mixed ability groups could go from one child who couldn't even write their name all the way through to a student who's expected to get A stars. And that kind of differentiation in the lesson is something that can be incredibly difficult, but also incredibly motivating and empowering when you're able to do that for a student and a, a child in your classroom. And so we're being able to do things like adding a voice note, adding um, a, a, a scaffold of, of just a table that shows them with something inside of that to be able to allow them to access that. Something where you've given them something slightly different or you've approached it with a different use of language to explain that to them. And actually within the classroom is getting other students to break down those barriers and allowing you to be able to have those conversations with each other without that fear of some, some classrooms, which can be really, really 
um, like it can really stop from being able to actually have that learning experience be driven across your your group room and I think it's really important that we get every student to think what if that was me how well, how would I want to be reacted to and actually your curriculum and the drive of the curriculum whatever it is you're doing like here for instance we were looking and we were peer observing on our designs and artwork for an innovation project um, and it's about not always looking to the critical but it's also not about always saying good oh it's good you know, I get that a lot with my children at dinner time. What did you do today? Nothing. Well, what was school like? It was good. Well, we need to expand on that. And how many different relevant links can we bring into that? And how can we make it accessible for every student? And if you have got a child from Italy or from Slovenia or anywhere, you know, can we actually get them to teach us some words that might describe and, and encourage and connect? Something that's going to actually make it connected with their own world. Um, just last week, um, I'd had I was using a, one of the other teachers creates the year nine curriculum, and there was a lawnmower in it. And I don't know about you, but in the UAE, the first thing I said was, "Well, how many of them are going to know what a lawnmower is?" And something like that is is even just making it accessible is actually no, they don't need to know about a lawnmower. Let's think about something else that can resonate with the same context that we're looking at those Boolean logics. But lawnmowers are just not something that's relevant, and it's about mm. to do that. Um, next is nourishing and nurturing. So having worked with nurture groups right from the beginning of my career all the way through to higher achievers, looking at gifted and talented and extending the curriculum with things like robotics, it's about making sure that our curriculum enhances, it enhances student development, their well-being, um, being able to not just share the, the kind of traditional elements of what you might teach them. So if you're a maths teacher, you don't always have to be standing in front of them talking to them about an equation, let's think about something that's happening in everyday life, give them different options and scaffold it so that the child, the student in your classroom isn't feeling at the beginning of that class, I cannot succeed. There should be a range of responses that are able to be contributed by every single child. And it needs to be personalized to be able to do that. And whether that begins with a range of different outcomes that, that child could give to you, or whether it's just making sure that objectives are clear and that you're not just giving them task-based learning and pacing that so that you are fully of the understanding that, that not every child will get to the end of every task and having the right kinds of extension tasks and not just assuming that they've got to a certain level so, oh, well, they can go on to next year's curriculum. Actually in enhancing and empowering the curriculum you have and and that part of that is about actually developing the tools that your teachers have. So for instance, having the um, having something like Go Bubble, which I've got on the screen here, allows us to actually nurture the extended curriculum and develop their sense of their own identity and their own well-being. And then actually being able to link that with other schools and then having those comparative conversations. And it goes back to the teacher Twitter, you know, that was such an empowering thing for me to be able to do and actually to be able to hook in curriculum um, understandings and objectives for students by opening the walls, breaking down the barriers and allowing them to collaborate with people globally is such an empowering ability as a teacher that you can share with them. And apart, aside from that as well is actually empowering your staff. So curriculum development, professional development. So I've got on here, Nash, we're a national online safety school. And there are so many things and parts of that curriculum that, that staff were not aware of, but now blend into the whole curriculum and blend into every area of our curriculum, because it is about having that wider understanding to be able to nurture and nourish our students as learners. And then it's about generating ideas and excitement. So there's a little video here and it has got some music, but I, it doesn't necessarily matter if it doesn't come through. Um, and it's about kind of getting excitement. So this was a really nice little project that I did with the science um, team. And they had a, um, they wanted to basically get the students in year five to work out a mystery. And it's a science-based mystery and it caused sensational stir. There was no digital technology involved in this aside from the video that they all watched. The absolute uproar of those students when they were doing that task, the tangible links, I'll let this little bit go.
the tangible links that it created because we used our staff, we used people who were relevant to them. We used figures, the little figure was something that they seen on the computer science, the science teacher's desk every day. And it allowed them to actually have a little bit of excitement and awe at putting science into practice of what would it be like if I was a, a if I was a, a detective and a forensic scientist? What would I do to be able to find out? And how can I actually utilize what I've learned in my curriculum to create an understanding and generate more ideas about how that progresses. And that builds relationships with those students and it builds that trust that you're gonna let them do something that's just a little bit more exciting and a little bit more creative. And I've put in here, allow for golden time. Now golden time is something that can be seen as um, a bit of a muddle sometimes. I feel like some teachers um, can use it just to kind of say, right, okay, you go off on there and you just do whatever you like. But actually golden time can be a place where we go, right, this is our curriculum. So what are you gonna do in this free time that you can actually allow your understanding to get better? Can you debate? Can you be creative? Can you have choice in your learning? So you could read, you could create, you could design, you can do whatever you would like around the concept of. And it's building those opportunities into extend and not just allow that education academic time to disappear into something that's less meaningful and less tangible. And it's making things interconnected. As I said at the beginning, being a design technology teacher, it's for me, it's all about making sure we have those links. So I constantly have conversations and I'm looking at other people's curriculums to find out what other people are teaching because finding out what others are teaching allows you to connect your subject, whatever it is, within their curriculum in your lesson. So for instance, I wanted to teach computer science lesson about using hyperlinks and using stories with multiple endings. Well, that linked into their English curriculum where they were looking at multiple ending stories and it allowed them to build a range of different skills. And then it's talking to art saying, I'm doing robotics, but I want to link in art and how, what are you doing at the moment so that I can actually engage that? What book are you reading at the moment that we could maybe be looking at linking in coding and commands and different structures of language? And, and it's really about being explicit. Do you remember in X lesson? Again, I'll go back to my year nines, we're teaching about Booleans and logic and looking at algorithms. And we all of us straight away, we go back to the concept that, okay, we're looking at maths. And what do we know about maths? What does it look like? What is relevant? And we're building on those skills and enhancing them so that then we don't have this disparity between one subject and another. And then we have the bigger picture. So when you're developing your subject, and I know these are not necessarily in logical order, um, they obviously have to go with the acronym, but building that bigger picture, it's like, what do you want to get out of the year? But then what do you want to get out of the term? And then what do you want to get out of that project and being smart about it? Because the projects that I've developed, the big massive breakouts where you have every single student in the, in the whole school taking part are all part of a much smaller goal so all those small goals were broken down and I always do work backwards I go with this huge idea and everyone kind of goes whoa 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 but actually you have that big idea and you then you break it down you decompose it and deconstruct it into what everyone needs to do to be able to create that bigger picture and how within your department can you create that bigger picture that could then link into something even more meaningful whether it's a STEAM week or an art week or robotics or whatever it happens to be, it could even be you know, UAE National Day. What are we doing to create the, the excitement and the relevance of that? It's not just a day. How can we progress to that day? How can we actually make it meaningful and share the learning that we've done on a day where we're celebrating the nation? And how can those bigger pictures be made and created by these short-term goals of our big projects. Learning is obviously important. I don't know how many of you have ever used Makey Makey, but they are quite possibly the most exciting things in the world. Um, with this group, they were tapping each other's heads and all thoughts, and it was incredible. Um, and, and so you make it accessible, you make it so it's obvious that they're learning. And that they're obvious that they're engaging because the engagement of everyone else will make those students who are not engaging want to want 
wants to engage. It will allow you to build on misconceptions of other students because you can share the positivity of one student and what their answer was within the concept of what's been misunderstood. And actually making sure they're learning with our, our formative assessments, just short snippets, a couple of questions a day, a couple of questions a week, a couple of questions per topic, will actually build in that understanding of consistency, that their routine is consistent and that their responses to the knowledge and understanding is consistent and that you know you've always got high expectations of what they're doing. And then we've got exploring the possibilities. Allowing and setting a framework, establishing routines, developing collaboration, creating that safe space that I've spoken about where every student can allow themselves to make a mistake without feeling sad about it or shocked about it, actually being able to be empowered by someone else going, oh, no, you're almost there, but this is, I think, what you meant. So saying it better, being able to have students to support one another and allow yourself to give them feedback. I think one of the biggest downfalls in every curriculum is not having time for your students to actually engage in what you're telling them to do. You're saying to them, you've done brilliantly, this is your next step, but then you don't give them that time to be able to have that next step. And, and that is so, so important in making sure that we're establishing and being able to explore the possibilities for excellence. So that is tangible. I was Philippa Raithma and I create learning experiences. I'm also the co-founder of Women in Education, Women Who Innovate and Innovate in Education. Um, and I also have Designed to Teach Digitally if you'd like to see anything else that I've been doing. <laughs>